All right, let's go out to Chattanooga, Tennessee, right down the road and talk to Maria. What's up, Maria? Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Of course. And I'm an incredible thanks. singer, so thank you for letting me sing your name. What's up? You, you did great, um, and thank <laughs> you for your show. <laughs> you. Anytime somebody says, oh, you did great, that means you did terrible. You did terrible. <laughs> What's up? And uh, your show has helped me on and off for the last one and a half years. So major thanks um, for having a program like this. So I'm calling today um, because I'm struggling with balancing out, I don't know, the reasons for making a decision to pause baby step two so that we can help our 14-year-old who attempted suicide a year and a half ago um, find purpose, focus, and hope. Um, whilst also not putting our family at risk of, you know, remaining in, in this debt situation. So for people Um, listening who don't understand her reference, you guys, Maria, your family, y'all are paying off. You're trying to get out of debt. You're trying to pay all your debts off, right? Yes, sir. And then you have a 14 year old girl who is really struggling. Yes. Yeah, she's doing well right now. Um, we've we've come a long way, and um, it was a, a quote unquote real suicide attempt. She um, ended up in ICU for three days, and then in a, uh, for a massive overdose of Tylenol, which would have killed her if she hadn't been on the phone with a friend who said you should call nine one one, and um, she then was admitted to this, I'll call it a stabilization facility that caused more damage than good. She was just a new 13-year-old and they put her in there for 10 days and we had no control over it. And she was with, you know, kids up to 17 years old who had drug and sexual and violent abuses and all this other thing. And so now what she's dealing with is just the trauma from that um, to help her move forward. But we have helped her. She did get the best um, dialectic behavioral therapy treatment. It was a, a full inpatient treatment for about six to eight weeks, and she meets with a therapist weekly. Um, What's her official and, diagnostic? Borderline? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. Major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety, and she also developed tics mm-hmm. and She's not ADHD, but she has a focus problem. And we're also thinking there's a little bit of this lovely, uh, what is it called? Opposite, oppositional Uh, uh, defiance. Yeah. Yeah, It's at some point they just start throwing everything up against a wall. Right. Right. (laughs) Right. I mean, it's just like, (laughs) I I want you guys to think, um, I want you guys to think outside of the diagnosis. Okay. Obviously, mm-hmm. she's seeing a professional, so let the professional do the professional things. Oh, yeah. Um, what she needs at home is a stable, um, yeah, warm, peaceful home. Yep. Yep. Okay. And, and, and we, uh, go, oh, ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, yes, that is something that we, uh, she does have a, she's not just, you know, the background. Uh, we are a very small, very close family. She's our only child. Um, and we do have um, her uncle lives with us. He is my brother. And he's a special needs adult. And uh, he's fully functioning. And so that that's the family unit. We don't have any other close relatives nearby. What was her story and as to... As to why? What led up to... Because yeah, yeah. That, that didn't happen in a vacuum we, for someone that young. N- that's right. Um, we haven't gotten a direct answer from her. The way that this whole thing started was that uh, beginning of uh, seventh grade, or towards the end of seventh grade, I guess, beginning of eighth grade, um, we got a call one day. Oh, sorry, sorry. So her behavior started changing. She started not talking with the friends we would normally hear her laughing and giggling with. And this was during COVID. Um, And she started wearing like darker clothing, which were like, okay, you're a teenager. You're going to try to find your look, your vibe, whatever, your group. 
Um, and she just seemed a little more moody and disconnected from us. And, you know, we would do our normal things, but we just chalked it up to hormones, right, wrong, or indifferent. And one day, you know, we had an argument about what she was wearing. She just looked sloppy and slovenly. And it was just like, what is going on? Like, what is this kind of like, you got this death vibe look going on, you know, just it's, I know you, I emo, are you goth? Like, what is the deal? And, um, we got into an argument about just how sloppy she was looking one day. And so she went to school that day. And then in the afternoon, I got the call from the school counselor that said, I have your daughter here and she's been cutting herself. And um, you need to take care of this. And we were just mortified because this is the kid who has access to everything, anything she wants to do. Not that we've overindulged her, but like, for example, horses. She loves horses. We don't own a horse. We've never been around horses. We have paid for her to have the best lessons as often as she needs, et cetera. And so it just completely pulled the rug out from under us. We found a therapist. And the therapist evaluated her on that first day. And then when she brought us in and she said, you guys, my husband and I, she's like, you guys are a helicopter parenting this child and she needs some space. You're stifling her. And we said, okay, we're going to back off. Tell us what you want us to do. And she said, right, let, hold on, I want to stop right there. How did that feel mm-hmm. when they told you that? We were. Is that hard to hear? Mm-hmm. We didn't. We, I'm a parent. Hard to hear. I, I did, we disagreed with it because. Our daughter had been given a cell phone and she knew the rules and we had told her for your protection, we are going to monitor randomly. And I told her, we don't have time. We have jobs. I don't want to look at your text. I don't care. I don't look, I don't want to look at my own text. I don't want to look at it. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop right there. Even that conversation right there, Maria, is too much for a 12 year old or a 13 year old. They can't, they can't cognitively process that conversation you and I were just having. Um, well, we me, took off the therapist had said, take off the monitoring software. That was a and terrible, was, terrible, terrible advice. And that's what we followed her because she accused us of being these hold on. super controlling parents. And we followed her damn advice. Sorry. No, that's and what, it, that's what it later, was. She overdosed. Yes. Right? That, was, that was dreadful advice. And, it was awful. But it's not in a vacuum. And even the way you've painted the conversation about she got put in 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 inpatient when she tried like really tried to take her life. Mm-hmm. It's a madhouse in there. It's scary. Oh, it's awful. But hold on. But y'all aren't the victims of that. No. It's the best services that your community happened to have to take care of your baby girl and keep her alive. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. I've been in there more times than I can count be sitting with people. But to leave and go, well, they did all of this stuff to us and reframe this in a victim's light or this, this, you got, I'm going to tell you right now, you got terrible advice. Here's what the advice should have been. No phones. Mm -hmm. A 13 year old who is trying to figure out who she is and is spinning out of control needs her parents to stop all the chaos. Not mm-hmm. to take the brakes off. Mm-hmm. What your kid desperately, desperately, desperately needs is her mom and her dad. Not, hey, we've got all this. We've got all this here. You can. De-. It's, you see what I'm saying? There's a difference there. And I'm not saying any of this we- is causal. Okay? None of this caused this thing. But what I'm trying to give you is a path out, especially in, in concert with professionals. Um, and the phone, so, go ahead, go ahead. See, so the, just to be clear with the timeline, within three to four weeks after that, with her seeing this therapist a few times a week, um, that's when she attempted suicide. And I called the therapist and she was just stunned. She was just like so apologetic. She just, she said, I didn't see it coming. And you know, my daughter was talking with her. So, so here, here's, here's the unfortunate place we find ourselves. Um, 
We'll link to it in the show notes. There's a, a what I would call a masterpiece book by Dr. Gabor Mate and his uh, another child psychiatrist. Um, and it's something along the lines of Hold On to Your Kids, I think it's called. See if we can find that title of that book. Um, but it's co-written with somebody else. Here's, here's okay. the premise of the book. You're going to hear from mental health professionals. You're going to hear from school officials. You're going to hear from everybody, every YouTube, Yahoo News article or whatever, telling you that the most important people in your kid's life when they become teens is their peers. And they need more unstructured interactive time with their peers. That's completely nonsense. That's not how their bodies are wired. Okay. Yes. Yep. We agree. And we've learned, learned that only the, in the most, the most horrible way. Um, and so we're in this state now where she is, she's doing well. We have better communication. I won't say that it's perfect. Well, no, I got a 13 year old. It's never perfect. It's never perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And I, you know, we do have a good sense of humor in our family. Like, you know, I, I will tell her if I mess up on something, I'll say, Hey man, cut me some slack. I've, I've, I've never done this before with a, with right. a child. You're oh, my yes. first, you know, so, so you know. is there a possibility that you or your husband or both could alter your work schedules to where y'all could each have a morning breakfast once a week with her just alone? Oh, we do. Oh, just, my God. Just shooting no, the crap? We've, we've always done that. Yeah, we have game night. We have movie night. We I've started giving her more of my time. Like, I will randomly, when I pick her up from school, I will do the unthinkable. I will show up with her favorite Starbucks drink, which I normally, because I'm on Baby Step 2, I'm not buying that. Right. So, you know, and, and we end up having just nice chats. We'll go for like a walk around and, you know, she, she has grown closer to us, but there are still, she's so traumatized per her therapist, um, from that experience that there are certain things she is just terrified to talk about, even with the therapist. Um, So we, we need to get to that ASAP. Yeah, and I've, um, she's working. I've shared that with the therapist, okay. and Here's, we're going to have a family session with yes, her as well. Good. So we and we do we do those periodically. Okay. And so my my concern like, on that kind of move is, and again, I'm I am mm-hmm. completely throwing spaghetti up against a wall here. Okay. Okay. But a kid who can't verbalize what's happening. Sometimes that means it's still happening. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that means it is so close. I don't have words for it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, and again, um, it can be anything from bullying at school that is so profound that just isn't fully understood. It can be you have another adult male living in your house. It can be any number of things. A combination of things too, right? In, 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 anything. But getting to that, where your daughter feels safe enough to start begin begin to start talking about some of this stuff. Let me go back to the beginning question here. <sighs> your child's mental health and mental well being is more important than getting out of debt. Your child being alive is more important than that goal right now. I'm not suggesting you go borrow a bunch of money. I don't think you need to do that. But but yes, your kid's health comes first. Does that mean you go buy a horse? No. That doesn't mean you go buy a horse. It does mean that your kid gets a job and begins to help out with horse lessons or dance lessons or whatever things y'all going to do. That does mean like in this one phone call, if you go back and listen to it, a victim of this, a victim of this, and now we're a victim of a, of a 13-year-old kid. At some point, I want you, Marie, to take ownership and your husband to take ownership of this house. I, I, We are going to be the most important people in the lives to our daughter. And we're not going to do that through force feeding. We're going to do that through connection. And man, there's all kinds of mess going on. And there's a, there is a spike in suicide. The last numbers I saw 
Um, it's been a minute since I looked at them, but it's there is a spike and there is a lost sea of middle school kids, like a lost generation of kids who the last few years of their elementary school was in COVID lockdown and it's a mess. I've got a middle schooler. I get it. I talk to middle school kids all the time. Whew, it's a mess. But I'm not going to attach all that mess to my kid. And if I got to pull my kid out of a school, I'm going to pull my kid out of a school. And I'm not going to give my kid a smartphone. I'm not going to give my kid unfettered access to bullies 24-7, 365. And that hurts my child. I know that. Or it doesn't hurt them. It, it makes them uncomfortable. It makes them a pariah. It makes them an outsider. I get that. But the data is too clear for me. And I'm not going to blame, and I'm not going to blame, and I'm not going to blame. I want you to start thinking about things that aren't going to be random, that might be very, very structured. Because it sounds like what this baby girl could use a healthy dose of is some significant structure. On Mondays we do this, and on Tuesdays we do this, and on Wednesdays we do this. And it's going to be a practice, a practicing of structure. And I think that might be good for the whole family. Obviously, 100% continue on with the, um, with the, with your counselor, with your therapist. And for every therapist listening, for God's sake, it is never the right move for a 12 or 13 or 14 year old for you to tell their parents, actually, we need you to back off even more and let them have unfettered access. You are overbearing checking on their phones. That's insane. Absolutely insane. I'm not giving my kids access to the open internet and all the predators and all the nonsense and all. I just had a call a minute ago about how I can't control myself. How am I going to expect my child to? No, no, thank you. No, thank you. Maria, continue to plug in your kid, man. Continue to plug in and don't break the bank. Buying things, obviously pay for rehab and things like that. If she needs to go get, go get professional help. But, um, Let's sit down and take a global look at your daughter's health, her mental health, and all the things, all, all that we need to do there. And let's make sure the whole family's plugged in because, there's man, something's not right. Something's not sitting right with me. And hopefully the therapist can dig that out. 